This is the Government Week in Review for the week ending Friday, October 27, 2023. I am Leslie Ann Johnson. In the headlines, St. Andrew's Anglican Primary School will be relocated to the Telescope Resources Center. Details to this and more when we return. Grenada is such a beautiful country. Get ready, Grenada. Kerry Cohen, Pity Martin. The countdown to our 50th anniversary of independence has begun. On October 31st, 2023, all roads lead to the carnage for the launch of our Jubilee celebrations in 2024. Wake up. The excitement starts at 4 p.m. Showcasing local culinary delights, artistic talents, and captivating performances in a magnificent display of our nation's traditions, culture, and history. Following a spectacular reveal of the independence theme and logo, celebrate with top entertainers, including the Black Wizard, Nivian Cox, Mr. Golden, and Dash. Grenada's 50th anniversary of independence celebrations. Be apart from the start and let's make history together. For more information, follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Visit www.grenadatons15.gd or call 438 5050. Grenada Nice, Grenada Nice, Grenada Nice. Welcome back. Grenada's Minister for Education, Honorable David Andrews, says following cabinet approval, the St. Andrews Anglican Primary School will be relocated to the Telescope Resource Center. A fire on the evening of October 13th destroyed the largest of the three temporary structures that houses the school at its temporary location at Progress Park. That structure contained nine classrooms and one grade six class, which accommodated 161 of the school's 372 students. The facing of the second largest building, as well as cameras and lighting, received significant damage, but the smallest structure, which houses four classrooms, was untouched. During a meeting of the Upper House on Thursday, Senator Andrews said the Telescope Resource Center was approved by the Caribbean Development Bank as a suitable location for the school prior to the construction of the temporary facilities at Progress Park. He says they are now considering its suitability given the current situation. The resource center at Telescope can house up to 75% of the school population with immediate retrofitting and dividing of the areas available and we'd have to make accommodation for the other 25. The plan is, Madam President, to have the one building that was not damaged relocated to the multipurpose, to the compound of the multipurpose center. And that, we believe, will house, be able to house all the students. The engineers have already looked, they've assessed the site, and they gave us good word that it's feasible, it's possible. And all of these options, I have good news to bear. One, they reduce, because of paramount important to us, Madam President, is the loss, is reducing the loss of instructional time. In this matter, there are no easy fixes, but the priority for us in education is to ensure that we reduce the loss of instructional time. We want to reduce to as short a period of time as possible the delay in re-engaging the teaching learning process. And so we are confident that that option is cost-effective because we understand that this, the retrofitting of the center, the moving of the, of the resource center, yes, the moving of the building from Progress Park to Telescope on the same facility, and the installation of air-conditioned machines, the construction of that building, and all of that will take place in a shorter period of time and at a cost of roughly $200,000. Now, if we go to consider reconstructing on the temporary site, the estimate is approximately $1.5 million. So we are confident that this strategy will see us in the shortest period of time get all the students back in class. Minister Andrew said as a temporary measure, effective October 30th, grade 6 students will resume classes at the Multipurpose Center in Grenville, while grade 4 and 5 students will be housed at the Pavilion at Progress Park. He says unfortunately they will not be able to physically house the remaining students at this time and hopes that means to engage them online can be looked at. 
Minister for Cargo and Fiji Martin Affairs and Local Government, the Honorable Tevin Andrews, is calling for stronger farming associations as government works towards investing more in livestock farming and production on the island. He made the call during a special meeting with the livestock farmers to discuss challenges and to formulate a working plan for 2024 and beyond. Highlighting projects which would include improvement to the Limle farm, he emphasized the need for a stronger association and offered his ongoing support to farmers. We are working to bring back Limle to its former glory with better and that will help as a speed off to help guide the farmers in terms of what they need to do. But it's important to hear what is needed is a stronger, we have an association already, what is needed is a more stronger, united um, farmers association or grouping that will be able to negotiate with your representatives, representatives meaning your, your policy implementers and your policy maker or makers so that more benefits or support can be given. When we do it on an individual basis, you don't get what you need. But when you come together, there's, there's power in togetherness to get more benefit, including better quality breeder livestock and even more farms. Because there's a lot of farms. There's a lot of farms. The St. Patrick's know that there's a lot of farms that probably we could, we could consider listing. Veterinary surgeon Dr. Linton Andrews and his staff are working with St. George's University to identify pests and diseases affecting livestock. More than 2,000 animals are registered by the livestock unit. I've taken a number of samples, taken it on to the school, the patch knows from Limlev Farm, from Funky Farm, I've taken a number two, and I took it to the school and they have detected a lot of parasite treatments from the Lloydis, um, some of them is tapeworms, a number of parasites, which means that with help caracou, that's a good incident. That actually you know what's a problem with in caracou. It's circulating among the sheep and the goats and so on. So then once you treat it, it'd be very easy where you could consume it, because some of the parasites are in pig, which I my thesis on. If you do not um, treat it properly, the pig, it goes into your brain, it goes into the arctic nerves, and it will blind you, even your kids walking on the ground and step on it. So all these things are important. Now we are trying to do a lot of samples, take school tests, and take them to the university. Among some of the challenges and concerns expressed were limited land space and assistance, water needs, and help with the construction of pens. What about the well that we can clean and the well? That's where they drag all the water. And the, the government pond there, those there. Right. And then right. there's one down in Whiteman, down on the other side. We need to fix it up and, you know, all those places, they want to clean them, you have enough water. So we need to change that whole system and tr try to train farmers to think more intensive. Or we can keep the animals one place and we get feed to them. Right? I'll, I'll tell all this something, I sound like a joke. But if you do your, an intensive system, if by chance one of these animals were to let go and they go outside, they ain't touching a leaf because they don't know what that is. They only know what you bring for them to feed on. Right? So I think we need to change our, our strategy holistically, not just push one direction for the farmers, but on the government standpoint, we're doing something different. The pastures that we have here with the grass types, they might only be sufficient that acre might substantiate like five sheep in reality. So somebody with 10 might only have about 50 head of animals with 10 acres. So when you look at the past, there are two the number of animals the farmers have. There's a big um, difference there in that farmers are landless and they have the morsel at home <laughs> if they want to keep their numbers up. If you have one acre land, you keep one acre animals. Mm -hmm. And you have any extra, you sell them. So you, and you don't have to let them go. You understand? Mm -hmm. And if you know you want to mine a hundred, get land to mine the hundred. Do not go and let it go to destroy somebody else. Residents of the community of Barrett now have a refurbished community center, more conducive for socializing and developmental programs, thanks to the leadership and commitment of Honorable Dickon Mitchell, Prime Minister and MP for the constituency. The project has received the kind support of the Singapore Hengsheng Grenada Development PTE Limited. On Monday, Prime Minister Dickon Mitchell officially cut the ribbon to the refurbished centre and said the reopening is testament of what can be achieved when communities bond together to accomplish goals that will have a positive impact on their members. I really want to, to use Barrett as an example of what some community initiative, some community spirit, partnership, 
with the private sector and partnership with MPs or the government can do to making things come true and come true a lot faster sometimes than if we were simply depending on the government. But this is just the start. As you can see, Minister for Sports, the Barrett pasture requires a lot of work. The playing field has suffered a lot from not being properly maintained, not being properly kept from vehicles driving onto the playing field. And so, as you can see, we've begun the process because there's no road for persons to get to the houses at the back, hence the reason why they drive to the playing field. We've begun the process, without any help from the Minister of Sports as yet, <laughs> to create a road to the extreme left perimeter of the playing field. The idea is to make it motorable. Hopefully we can get funds to concrete it so that persons can drive on the road and not on the playing field, right? And we will be putting up barriers once we've done so to prevent persons from driving onto the playing field. Because you can see we've begun the process of putting the soil on the playing field so that we can level it out, make it flat, regrass it, and make sure that it becomes a proper playing field. The community center belongs to the community. And the onus is on us to make sure that we take care of it, that we maintain it, and that we can use it harmoniously. I know sometimes we like to fight for things we didn't build, right, and have disputes over communal property. And sometimes you want to act as if the community center belongs to one group of people. It is a community center, and we have to make sure that we have the right management in place uh, to make sure uh, that it is utilized pro uh, properly. Now, I, I also want to ensure that we use it for as many uses as possible. Whether it's training, whether it's for community meetings, whether it's for government meetings, whatever. I don't just want it to be a concrete building that gets closed up and it's not being put to use. So there are a lot of community initiatives that I'm sure will be coming shortly. Now that you have the community center, um, whether it's skills training, whether it's uh, etiquette training, whether it's uh, interaction between the senior citizens and uh, junior citizens, whether it's teaching people how to play cards, dominoes, what have you. I want us to be able to use the community center for our benefit. Resident Honorable Adrian Thomas applauded the efforts of MP Honorable Dickon Mitchell in remaining true to his word to improve the social standing of the people within his constituency. St. David has a chance to be the sample of the best constituency Grenada has ever seen. Grenada, Caracol, and Petit Matnik. A community center is so important in the development of a community, it's unbelievable. A community that don't have a community center, sooner or later you will find that it's very populated, yet for all you feel so isolated. Because you do not have that center where the young and the old can mingle with each other. You do not have that place where people could meet and interact with each other and get to know each other in the community. This is a venue, don't mind the smallness of it, Barrett is a small village. This is a place where you can organize activities for children. You can also organize activities for the elderly. We have a place, we don't have to contemplate and go in and rent any place or any tent. We have a place where we can come and socialize also. David Wong of the Singapore Hengsheng Development Limited PTE is happy with his company's decision to assist with the refurbishment. To be honest with you, I wasn't expect, expected to have this uh, great honor, you know, to have the ribbon cutting ceremony with uh, Prime Minister D.K. Mitchell. That's really something for, uh, for means a lot for me. And uh, since I've been to the island in February 3rd, this is my third uh, community activities. Now I regret I need to should participate in more community <laughs> activities. <laughs> because in this small room, I feel, you know, we as a representative of a Hansen group, on behalf of Mr. Lee and the entire team of Singapore Hansen um, property development, we did so little but we got so much more in return. In this small room, I feel the passion. I, f I feel the passion from you. I feel the friendliness. I feel you know, the hospitality, also the democracy from you. Yeah. One of the residents was responsible for executing the refurbishment work. Good thing doesn't come fast, take times. But sometimes we don't know what we have until we lose it. You see, you see, 
And I always tell people, big thing can go. Little thing what does go. And little thing what does act. Because if you have three big, you can't get big because you don't big already. And when he's small, he could always move. I hope only, I'll speak, I'll speak a lot of carb eh? so, so I hope only understand where I'm coming from. If only understand, I could break it down for you. Right? Because look at the problem. He says he's a small man. <laughs> right? And watch what he's doing. So that is a problem. So you see, he put in out. So you see, sometimes we have to throw away, forget money. Money will come. And help. When you do, God does give you a blessing. He doesn't know where you come from. And that I always tell people. And that's why me and my wife just always do. Help people and we and ageable people and disabled people we do talk. Help people and then when you help people a thing. Is this enough for me now? No. I don't have no children. <laughs> my children is thirty seven and thirty eight. Yeah. I have three grandchildren. Because they're big man and bigger man. People don't say they're children, they're not children. They're on their own. My daughter married before me. So we have to help them. Help them. You know what I mean? Every community come together as one and we work. This is the Government Week in Review. When we return, we look back at events that marked the 40th anniversary of the October 25th events in Grenada. Prepare for hurricane. Prepare for hurricane. Make sure you have your radio and your batteries too. Waterproof flashlight candles will do kin stuff. Garbage bag, birthday kit. Come on, people, make sure you have it. Clean water in a container and a hurricane plan. Hear me no man. Hurricane damage is beyond your control. Surviving the aftermath is up to you. Have a hurricane plan. It can save your life and your family too. Prepare for hurricane. Your hair prepare for hurricane. Welcome back. Grenadians are being encouraged to use the occurrences of October 25th, 1983 to chart the course toward a brighter future. Forty years ago, the island was invaded by the United States in what was known as Operation Urgent Fury. This year's Remembrance and Thanksgiving Ceremony was held at the Blessed Sacrament Catholic Church in Grand Dance under the theme, Remembering We Dream. It was attended by Governor General Her Excellency Dame Cécile Lagrenade, Prime Minister the Honorable Dickon Mitchell, Cabinet Ministers, Opposition Leader Dr. Keith Mitchell, senior members of the Royal Grenada Police Force, as well as representatives from Cuba, Venezuela, and the United States, among others. Chairman of the Conference of Churches in Grenada, Bishop Clyde Harvey, is hopeful that as Grenada recognizes another October 25th, genuine healing can take place so that the nation can move forward. Unless we are healed of our wounds, we will not be able to truly go forward. So we thank all those who continue to do that work of healing, who continue to do whatever they can to meet people where they are. Because again, what many of our citizens are saying, don't tell me forget, just help me to remember and to give thanks, which is our theme today. And so to all of you, physically present here in Blessed Sacrament Church, or viewing from other places, we say, thank God that you are with us and may the experience of this hour plus be truly an experience to remember, but an experience that heals your wounds and enables you, whenever you remember, to give thanks. Pastor of the Seventh-day Adventist Conference, Jerome Gordon, reminded the gathering that the dreams for a better future must be influenced by the acceptance of what occurred in the past. The farther back we look, the more acute shall be our vision looking forward. Therefore, as a nation, as we dream of the preferred future, one that is bright with sustainable progress, it must be influenced by what we accept and embrace as a pedagogical past. We must remember, and in remembering, we dream. Grenada, Cariacoon, Pity Martinique, let's dream big. And as you dream, roll up your sleeves and get down to work. All the time trusting in the mighty power of a good God. Because if we can believe it, by God's grace we can achieve it. Immediately following the ecumenical service in Grand Dance, a 40th anniversary Thanksgiving memorial ceremony was held at the St. George's University to honor the U.S. men who died during the operation. It was attended by many of those who served during the operation. Prime Minister Honorable Dickon Mitchell referred to the October 19th to 25th period as Grenada's Dark Night, 
from which it emerged through the sacrifice of the American soldiers. He said for the first time in 40 years, Grenada declared the 19th of October a national holiday, adding the fact that it took 40 years to acknowledge that the events of that day led to the events of October 25th is because of the pain and darkness that October 19th signaled for many. This Thanksgiving holiday should remind us that we all need, in our own small way, to rage against the darkness. We will therefore be forever grateful for the assistance provided to us in our darkest times that has helped to set Grenada back on the path to democracy, stability, peace, and prosperity. Linda Taliella Taylor, the U.S. Ambassador to Barbados, the Eastern Caribbean, and the OECS welcomed the opportunity to be part of the ceremony. She said the relationship between the U.S. and Grenada continues to grow with each passing year. Today, the United States and Grenada enjoy bonds of friendship, cooperation, and shared purpose that unite our people and our governments. Americans and Grenadians continue to be committed to the rule of law, to democratic governance, and to human rights. Our bilateral relationships have strengthened by decades of economic, education, culture, security links, as well as by people-to-people -people connections that bring our nation closer. I will say that since we recognized Grenada back in 1974 as a country, we have partnered with them, particularly on many military activities. We have used them in the military uh, hum uh, humanitarian assistance program. We have worked with them in training their military and police force. We have partnered with them on many things. Retired U.S. Army Colonel Ralph Hagler shared remarks on behalf of those who served during Operation Urgent Fury. Both Colonel Hagler and Vice Admiral Alvin Hosley, Military Deputy Commander of the United States Southern Command, paid tribute to the brave young men from nine different U.S. states who gave their lives in the evacuation of SGU students on October 25, 1983. Our mission was very simple. The orders were issued, units were alerted, and orders prepared. Goodbyes were said to your families, and the uh, and of course, we then moved off to execute that, that uh, sworn oath to execute what we're supposed to do. This is an emotional visit for me. I've not been back here in 40 years. The loss of life and injuries is very hard to cope with even after that long period of time. We still grieve those losses. When democracy and the rule of law are challenged, it is our imperative to stand with our partners. Swiftly responding to the appeals of Sir Paul Schoon, Governor General of Grenada, and the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, Operation Urgent Fury was secretly planned and brilliantly executed by warriors and citizens. We forever owe our gratitude to those brave souls who sacrificed to include their own lives, secure Grenada, rescued American citizens, and prevented the export of terrorism and communist influence in the region. Chancellor of the St. George's University, Dr. Charles Modica, paid tribute to the military members who were here during the intervention and returned to be a part of the ceremony. Your willingness to return to Grenada and honor those members of your forces that gave their lives is commended with great enthusiasm and respect by all. You helped show the world the significance of a nation that can use its military force to bring peace to a nation in turmoil and leave that nation in peace with its own free will to pursue happiness and freedom and self-determination. The Embassy of Cuba also paid tribute to the 24 Cuban international workers who died on October 25, 1983 with a service at the mausoleum at the Morris Bishop International Airport. They were part of 784 Cubans who were in Grenada, including diplomatic staff, their families, and the children during the time of the intervention. Head of the Morris Bishop Martyrs Foundation, Dr. Terence Marichaud, said the occasion was not to mourn their deaths, but to celebrate their lives and legacy and the cause for which they gave their lives. 
the government and people of Cuba, and particularly the families who lost their loved ones here, we again thank you. And we know that you have been deprived of your loved ones, but we know also that they are not only heroes of the Cuban people, they are also heroes of the Grenadian people. This monument here, constructed with the help of Cuban and Grenadian assistance, continue to serve as a permanent reminder of the hero heroic sacrifices of our Cuban comrades. The ceremony was also addressed by Cuban Ambassador Luis Rodriguez, who is wrapping up his duty to Grenada to take up another position in New Zealand. This memorial, built with the efforts of Cubans and Grenadians, represents the long-standing friendship relation between our two peoples, and we have to preserve it as a symbol of heroism, humanism, and solidarity. Prime Minister Honorable Dickon Mitchell thanked the Cubans for what he called the ultimate sacrifice. He said their involvement in the construction of the international airport continues to contribute to the sustained development of the people of Grenada. So Your Excellency, we have no doubt that the people of Cuba and the government of Cuba and the 12, 24 fallen martyrs have left perhaps in the last 40 years the single most indelible mark that pays tribute to the economic development of Grenada. Because we cannot doubt or question that the construction of the Maurice Bishop International Airport has transformed the economic landscape of Grenada. And so we owe an indelible mark of gratitude to you and the people of Cuba. And over at the St. George's Center Cemetery, the Morris Bishop on October 19, 1983, Martyrs Foundation held a memorial service to remember the soldiers and militia killed during the U.S. invasion. It included the laying of wreaths, reading of poetry, and scripture reading. The homily was delivered by Father Carl Haynes, who said while many are still hurting from the events of October 1983, now is a good time to forgive Heal and let go. Healing can come about only when there is forgiveness. Only when there is forgiveness. Because as long as we, begin, we, be, we continue to hold on to things, it remains there and it could never bring about healing. But when we are able to forgive, then the process of healing begins. And so I want to make a special appeal to all of us gathered here irrespective of where we stand during the 1983 crisis, that there is a need for us to let go. There is a need for us to forgive. We take another break when we return, launch of Grenada's 50th anniversary of independence celebrations just around the corner. Climate change is real, bringing hotter days and less rain. Less rain means less water, so, it is crucial for all of us to conserve water at home. When washing my fruits and vegetables, I use a bowl of water, and later I reuse it to water my plants. This is how I save water at home. What are you waiting for? Welcome back. Grenada will officially launch its 50th anniversary of independence on Tuesday, October 31st. The celebration, which will take place on the Carinage, will be officially launched by Prime Minister Honorable Dickon Mitchell. Chairperson of the National Organizing Committee, Dr. Wendy Crawford, will provide an overview of the committee's mandate and plans to mark this historic event. The festivities will begin at 4 p.m. with an array of activities and entertainment. A release from the Secretariat of the National Organizing Committee says attendees can expect a delightful culinary experience with Grenadian food and beverages provided by local vendors. It adds that the creative artistry will also take center stage in celebration of the outstanding artistic talent found throughout Grenada, Caracou and Petit Martinique. The release further stated that visitors can expect to be entertained at selected locations along the Carinage with an array of performances, from drumming and steel pan to dance and songs, along with other inclusions which will surprise and delight. 
Following the official reveal of the Independence theme and logo, the evening will continue with an after show featuring a number of local artists. A momentous occasion for Grenada on Tuesday with the flag raising ceremony in commemoration of United Nations Day. It marked the anniversary of the signing of the UN Charter in 1945. This year's theme, The Front Lines of Climate Action, underscores the vision of UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres, who advocates for faster, bolder climate action. Government officials, civil society leaders and students from across the country were present. Roxy McLeish Hutchinson, the Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Trade and Export Development, says the fact that the United Nations has more than 100 member nations now is evidence of its significance. When the United Nations Charter was ratified 78 years ago, on October 24, 1945, some 51 countries signed it. Today, 193 countries are members of the United Nations, nearly every nation in the world. And so it is significant to note that the ideals and purposes for which the UN was founded, that is, to promote peace and security, fundamental human rights, poverty eradication, improving well-beings of citizens, economic and social progress, justice, tolerance, gender equality, friendship and cooperation all remain valid today as they were 78 years ago. Resident Coordinator of the United Nations, Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean, Didier Trubuk, congratulated the government of Grenada for honoring the UN since becoming a member in 1974. And I wish to congratulate the government of Grenada as this year marks 49 years of this country's membership uh, to the UN. And as we inch closer to ushering in 2024, the year of Grenada's golden jubilee anniversary and the country as a country and as a member of the United Nations, we take today the opportunity to reflect on the remarkable strides this nation has made in strengthening its resilience and commitment to the principle of the UN through inclusion and leaving no one behind. Minister for Foreign Affairs, the Honorable Joseph Andal, also shared remarks at the event, emphasizing the importance of the UN in promoting peace and development around the world. If we think things are bad with the UN around, just try to imagine how much worse it would be had there been no UN. Ladies and gentlemen, Grenada remains committed to the principles and objectives of the United Nations Charter, principles that promote peace, justice, fairness, and equality. And although we are just a mere dot on the world map, we are committed to ensuring that we lend our voice to the calls for peace, justice, security for all in this global community. We recommit as a country to the goals, the principles, and the objectives of the United Nations. We call on all humanity to work towards the achievement of the SDGs and to speed up action to combat, in particular, the ravages of climate change. Prime Minister Honorable Deacon Mitchell planted a tree at the Botanical Gardens as a symbol of United Nations Day 2023. And finally, the U.S. Embassy in Grenada has donated 20 desks and chairs to the Grenada Junior Academy as part of the Continuing Promise Mission 2022. The donation was made during a handover ceremony at the school's premises. The U.S. Embassy entrusted the Industry Department of His Majesty's Prisons with the job to construct the furniture. Linda Taliala Taylor, Ambassador to Barbados, the Eastern Caribbean and the OECS, expressed gratitude to the U.S. Embassy for the donation. She said that the new furniture will help to improve the learning environment for the students. This is Child's Month here in Grenada with the theme, No Child Left Behind. Last month when we were here, we realized that there was a need for school supplies and school desks, and we worked with our partners the prison included to make this 
a reality. We're hoping that this helps the school in helping the students to have a good learning environment and making it more conducive to wanting to be in the classroom and to participate. So we're hope that these desks and chairs will be important to the students. Principal Officer of the U.S. Embassy in Grenada, Frances Herrera, also joined with the Ambassador. I do want to thank Continuing Promise personnel of the U.S. Navy um, for providing us with the, the funds for the um, community relation um, projects here and part of that were the desks that were made and, and just like you said Ambassador we really appreciate the prison the work the craftsmanship their excellent craftsmanship here and um, giving back to the children is important to the Ambassador our, to myself the Ambassador in the United States and um, I just want to thank everyone for this opportunity. Principal of the Grenada Junior Academy Natalie Greenwich thanked the Embassy for collaborating with His Majesty's prisons and said the donation is appreciated. On behalf of the Grenada Junior Academy staff, students, and parents, we want to say a heartfelt thank you to the American Embassy and a special thank you also to the prisons for this donation. We assure you that we would show appreciation of those donations by ensuring that proper care is taken of them. And thank you again for trying to help to make the learning environment comfortable for our students. Officer Cassia Joseph, attached to the Prison Industry Department, say they are pleased to be able to assist the Embassy. And on behalf of the Commissioner and Staff of Her Majesty's Prison, we thank you for the opportunity to, to showcase our excellent craftsmanship to, to the U.S. Embassy. And Ambassador, again, we are so grateful for the opportunity to just highlight the prison a bit, you know, to show what we are about, what we do. All of this is part of our rehabilitative process, right, because we seek to rehabilitate our inmates to allow them to go back to society. So we are so grateful. We are so thankful. Here's where we come to the end of our newscast. I'm Leslie Ann Johnson. Thank you for viewing.